hi guys good morning did i just do and upload a weekly vlog <laughs> yeah but <laughs> i'm gonna do another vlog because today is independent bookstore day so i have at least two bookstores i want to go to i might hit up more it honestly depends on the time i'm going to a show tonight surprise surprise tonight i am seeing flo millie and the driver era weird combo i know i I don't know how this came about. I just, I don't know. The ticket was $12. <laughs> I'm gonna hop on the train and go to the Lower East Side and hit up Blue Stockings because they're having 23% off everything. So I'm going to check that out. <laughs> I should have really tried to find someone to come here with today because they have this mural and I really want to take pictures in front of it but there isn't really anywhere for me to put my phone to take like self timer pictures so sad all right so I went to the two places that I really wanted to go but there is a book that came out recently that I wanted to buy that I have not been able to find so I might hit up one more place portion of the video but first let me address the elephant in the room there's a new addition on the necklace stack I got this necklace from a small business on Instagram I don't want to get the name wrong I think it's Le Petit Sprout question mark I don't speak French I took it to play in high school but it's a mirror ball necklace I'll put a better picture of it but yes I haven't decided if she's gonna live here permanently but I like the way it looks for now. I've been wearing it for a few days, so. Do we remember how I mentioned at the beginning of the vlog that I was going to see Flo Millie in the driver era last night? Yeah. Here's me and Flo Millie. <laughs> Here, here's the picture I took with Flo Millie. She's very sweet and she smells really good. And she's a really good performer, so. Yeah, that's my update on that. I went three places yesterday. I went to Blue Stockings on the Lower East Side, who I love. I absolutely love it there. <laughs> Books are Magic in Brooklyn. And I went to Greenlight in Brooklyn. And I bought some books. So let's get into it. <laughs> the first book that I have that I bought is um, Chef's Kiss by TJ Alexander. This is a romance, and honestly, I <laughs> I bought this because it sounds like Love and Other Disasters. Like, the premise sounds like Love and Other Disasters, and I love that book. So I was like, ah, here we are. Do we remember my last book haul video where I, like, kept not reading the back and then just, like, spewing bullshit about what the book was about? I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. Okay, so... This is about Simone, who is a recipe developer at a test kitchen, and her new manager, Ray, who accidentally goes viral, and then they start working together, and then Ray comes out as non-binary at work, and it's a queer rom-com. I'm not gonna bullshit you. I bought this because it sounded like Love and Other Disasters. And will it be as good as Love and Other Disasters? Who knows? But I loved that book, so I bought this book. The Memory Librarian by Janelle Monae. I am a huge, 
huge Janelle Monae fan. I love her. My obsession with Dirty Computer in 2018 was like so real. I need to revisit that album because I haven't actually listened to it in so long, but oh my god, I think she's a genius. I think she's amazing. So I'm so excited that she wrote a book, especially because they're set in like the same world as the Dirty Computer album. So it's the Memory Librarian and Other Stories of Dirty Computer. <sighs> Bitch. And look at, th I mean, this is just so beautiful. Look at this cover, please. So there are five short stories in here. The other contributing authors on this book are Alea Dawn Johnson, Danny Lore, Eve L. Ewing? <laughs> Eve L. Ewing, Ewing? Eve L. Ewing, I'm gonna say Ewing. Johanka Delgado and Sherry Renee Thomas. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I love short story collections. I think they're so fun. And I love Janelle Monáe and I love this fucking album. So I can't wait. I knew I was gonna buy this this weekend because um, I wanted to buy it like when it came out. And yeah, it just so happened that I was able to get 23% off at Books Are Magic on Indie Bookstore Day. So slay. And so I can't get over it. It's so beautiful. Ah! The last, oh, <laughs> this book's heavy. The last book I bought at um, Blue Stockings is a bit of a backstory. My friend Maya texted me the other day and was like, hey, have you ever heard of this author? And I was like, oh, I've wanted to buy one of her books and I've almost bought it like four times and I haven't bought it yet. And she was like, well, she's doing a signing at a bookstore close to where I live and um, I didn't know if we wanted to go. So I bought one of her books. So I got On a Sunbeam by Tilla Walden. This is a big chunker of a graphic novel. I'm pretty sure it's a science fiction graphic novel and it's sapphic and it's going to fill the heart stopper sized hole in my heart. <laughs> at least that's my hope for it. Look at how big this book is. This thing's huge. I'm gonna read it soon so that I can get back to Maya about going to that event. But oh, it's fucking so giant. But the art's really beautiful. This graphic novel is over 500 pages. I don't know what the actual plot is. Um, I just know, I know a few things. I know that it was on my Storygraph want to read list, um, which means at some point I heard the plot and thought, yeah, and put it on my list. Um, I know that it's set in space and I know that it's sapphic. Those are the things I know. And I know that it's heavy and that this is starting to hurt my wrist. So I'm gonna put it down. <laughs> Next I went to um, Books Are Magic and I bought three books there. Um, the first one is Love and Color that is finally out on paperback. Um, I put this, I know, this is what I know. I know that I put this on my want to read list um, when I saw Jack Edwards talking about it on his YouTube channel. This is Mythical Tales from Around the World Retold and I'm pretty sure it's all romance question mark. Oh, these books are magic bookmarks are so beautiful. Look at them. Oh, oh. They're so beautiful. It says on the back, a vibrant collection of love stories retelling myths, folk tales, and histories from around the world. I don't know if they're all like modern retellings or if they're just like retellings in general, but I do believe they're all love stories. And I really like that it's from all over the world and not just concentrated on one place. So I like that a lot. I'm a big fan of retellings. Also, this is um like a square paperback which I think is interesting because I haven't seen this very often, but I just read uh, Gallant by V.E. Schwab and that's also like a square. So interesting, interesting. New shapes in the publishing industry. And then I bought Girls Can Kiss Now, which is a collection of essays by Jill Gutowitz. Um, this is very reminiscent of the 2000s Made Me Gay by Grace Perry. 
Did I get that right? It just feels like a collection of essays about being queer. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the reason I bought this is because I follow the Safflet book club on Instagram and every month I'm like, I'm gonna read their book this month. And then every month I don't. <laughs> so I just have like a big extended backlog of Safflet book club picks that I want to read and this is one of them. I really want to get in to essays more because I don't know to me it's very much like a non-fiction short story format so I'm into it. I love looking at I love being able to break things into like smaller pieces and I with like short story anthologies and essay collections that's done for me so I'm excited. Look at this cover it's very pretty. It's very pretty. Last book I got, literally when I saw this, I was like, I knew it came out and I knew I wanted to read it, but I hadn't seen it anywhere yet. So I was literally like, I wasn't even looking for it, but I saw it and my brain just like lit on fire and I grabbed it immediately. And that is Love, Hate and Clickbait by Liz Bowery. I am so excited for this because it's a queer political romance. Like, literally. <laughs> this guy's name is Morgan. Tom Morgan. My name's Morgan. <laughs> I believe this is like a fake dating novel between political consultants on a presidential campaign. I know we're all thinking red, white, and royal blue, right? But red, white, and royal blue, my enjoyment of that book so much and my enjoyment of the like campaign aspect of that book um, made me like sort of push me in the direction that I like to read my romance in, hence why I loved like Red, White, and Royal Blue, The Charm Offensive, Love and Other Disasters. Like those are all romance novels that I feel like have a common ground of working on something that goes into the public, whether it be a TV show or a political campaign. And this is about that and I'm so excited and it's queer. Like and also like all of the straight rom-coms about like political romances are like one of them's a Republican. No, no. I don't want to read about Republicans being happy. Jesus. This literally feels like um, the Charm Offensive and Red, White, and Royal Blue like combined. I'm so excited. I love both of those books. I can't wait to read this. This is like Every time I get a new book that I really want to read, I'm like, this is going on the top of my pile. And then yeah, it doesn't happen. Down to the last two. Um, I'm going to show you this one first because you saw it in the vlog clip because this is actually the whole reason I went to a third bookstore was because I wanted this book that had just come out and I couldn't find it anywhere. This is Sophie and the Bone Song by Adrian Tooley. This is a YA fantasy sci-fi debut. Um, it's sapphic and the magic system is based on music. Ah! Um, if you know me, I feel like I've definitely talked about this before, but music is my life. Um, not to be dramatic, but it's true. Um, I took AP music theory in high school. Did I pass the exam? No, but <laughs> look, I firmly believe that I would have passed the exam if it wasn't for the fact that there was a pandemic because the AP, <sighs> the AP music theory exam had two parts to it. Normally the AP music theory exam has like seven different things that they test you on, but because of the pandemic and because they had to put it online, they only tested you on two things. And one of them was sight singing. I am notoriously bad at sight singing, like awful, like really, really bad. <laughs> like I can do it if I have time to like write out what the notes are to do like a, a do, re, mi, and then I can do it, right? But they wanted you to do it like on demand, just like look at the notes and sing it. I can't do that. I cannot do that. So, <laughs> I did good on the part writing though, but I can't sight sing, like at all. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> Look, it says music is the last true art. That is so fucking cool. The magic system's based on music and it's sapphic. Literally what else could I want in life? I think it's also rivals to lovers. I'm so excited. Okay, last book. I picked this up last minute and literally, I don't think I've ever actually heard of it before, but I read the back, well, the cover intrigued me. And then I read the back and I was like, yes. 
but uh, this is Smile and Look Pretty by Amanda Pellegrino. And when I read the back, it says that the main characters in this book are best friends who are all overworked and underpaid assistants to some of the most powerful people in the entertainment industries. You guys know, as soon as I saw the words entertainment industry on the back of this book, I snatched that shit up. It's mine now. So I'm excited. Anything and everything to do with the entertainment industry in books and stories is my jam. And I think I'm actually gonna make a whole recommendations video uh, for that niche because it's my favorite niche. I love it. I think this is like a lit fic slash thriller thing. Um, the genres in Greenlight weren't separated. It was literally just a big wall of fiction and then a big wall of nonfiction. And then in the back was like children's and YA fiction. So I don't know what genre it is. All I care about is that it's entertainment industry focus. That's it. <laughs> this is my favorite thing to read about is the entertainment industry. All right, guys, that is everything. Uh, thank you so much for doing this with me. I'm really glad I got to film another video in this style because I really liked doing my first one from the Lower East Side book crawl. Um, so yeah, I'm super happy I got to do this style video again. I think it's really fun. Um, don't be surprised when there's another book haul in like two weeks. Um, I'm gonna film the how many books can I buy in a semester video when I move out of this dorm, which is in like two weeks. That is coming as well, so that will be another book haul. And I think I know what video I'm gonna film next week and I'm super excited about it. So, thanks for being here. 200 people, holy shit. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys greatly, and I love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. I got in a song in. Oh. It smells super good. So I can pose. Oh, fucking fuck.